I think Flexi Drive might work for this year's challenge. Oh, really? Let's show them how it works. So we noticed for this year's game Slapshot, there's not much room on the field to drive, so we decided to downsize this drive train. Dan over here is gonna show you how to build it. So I'm gonna start making the robot now. So what wheels are you using to make this drive train? I am gonna use Omni wheels because this way it can maneuver around the slap shot field much easier and like realign easier. Are you going to be uh, using chain to drive the, the wheels or uh, gears? I will be using both for so that it's a bit easier to change the ratio and quick to make. So right now I am putting the tires on. All right, and notice you have this like little thing in between the tire and this piece here. Why do you have that? because the Omni wheel ends up sticking out further than the actual tire. So you need this piece for the, like spacing so it won't rub on the edge. Okay. Why are you choosing to use Omni wheels instead of uh, the traction wheels? Because traction wheels is a bit more, have a bit more friction on the ground. So it will result in harder turns and not center turns. What is this piece for? This is to hold some uh, shaft collars so that this tire won't slide around on the beam. So now I'm putting on the sprockets for for like the chain to connect the two tires so it's much easier to build. I'm gonna start building the, the other like shaft for the other tire. So I'll start making the second tire. So I'm gonna put the axle into the Omni wheel first. And now I'm gonna get uh, some shaft collars and I'm gonna put it right inside of the tire. Why are you using shaft collars instead of just spacers? Uh, I use shaft collars because once you close it off, then this way uh, the tire won't like shift around on the axle while you're kind of driving. And now I'm now now you have to put a two by two with a square in the center with some two standoffs. Now you need to use the spacer and put it in here. This is because the Omni wheel sticks out a bit, so, but this is the right spacing. So next I'm gonna get uh, two spacers. I'm gonna put like this small sprocket, uh, one more spacer, and two washers. How come you need all that space in front of the uh, uh, in front of the sprocket? Because the chain, when it's on the sprocket, it actually has a bit of thickness. So this is like the exact spacing that you need for the chain. Why are you adding in those pieces? This way, I'm going to put another beam on top and then connect it. So this way, it is all like squared off and very strong. Okay, so here I have the th three hole connectors and I'm gonna put, start putting the chain on. Make sure the chain is the right length and not too tight or not too, too loose. Why do, why do you not want it to be too tight or too loose? If it's too tight, then you end up bending the axles a bit so the tires, they won't turn that well. And if it's not tight enough, then there'll be like a lot of slippage and it won't like, like one might turn, but not the other one. I have to put this on, on both sides. And those are just bracing? 
yeah, da -da, but to like connect it. So like, kind of screw, bearing it off. Now on the side with the uh, shorter axle, put a two by four piece. And that just connects those two sides in. Yeah. But make sure not to put it onto the other side because we need to connect that like with another piece later. Okay, now we're gonna start making the gearbox. So the gearbox is on this robot is this section um, where the motor is attached, where the gear runs another gear and eventually runs the wheels. Um, the reason why we're using gears and sprockets is that gears um, are more flexible because they have a lot of different types of ratios you can choose from and that allows us to, to change the ratio depending on how heavy your robot is. Okay, so now make sure that you have boxes on both sides. This way the gear can like run a bit more freely and not get stuck on like these all kinds of like and you can see that he's putting in these standoffs. Um, short standoffs are extremely strong because they're short and thick and they can connect pieces very quickly and and securely together. So make sure to use standoffs when you can. Just the shorter ones. When, it get, when they get longer, they become more fragile because they can bend easily. When, when you think you want to use a longer standoff, uh, use beams to connect just like over here. For this build, we are using the metal motor axles, but B1 comes with plastic. Uh, the plastic tends to break easier, that's why we bought these ones instead. So quick, so when, when you're done, the first thing we suggest is to change your plastic axles into these metal ones because they're stronger. And when you get heavy, when you add more stuff onto this robot, there's more stress on the, the axle. Now I'm gonna test the motor on. So some of the reasons why the flexi drive is very flexible is because first, when you want to adjust the length of the of the drivetrain, you only need to adjust the length of the bars and the amount of chain you have, and you don't need to adjust how many gears you put in here because we're using chain. Um, the second thing is if you want to change the ratio of the drivetrain, you don't need to change the ratio of the gears in here and maybe lose washers and all that. Stuff, uh, you just need to change the amount of the gear ratio up in this yellow gearbox. Um, in other caution tape drive chain videos, you may have seen that that they put that they use the brain as bracing uh, because this brain is a very strong piece and can't really bend. So here we're using a two 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 hole connectors and a two by two connector to hold this brain in place and make sure that both sides of this drive chain can't really spread apart. Now you can go and attach the the two hole connector, the ninety degree connector, for you to attach the brain onto. After that, you can duplicate for like the other side of the drive chain. Oh, the flexi drive up here. It is magical. magical. Okay, so now we're gonna connect these two together on the back here, where we did not put the two by four. Just put it on. And all these peg holes and all these stubs, uh, the, the, the pegs, uh, so there's technically six pegs holding it in on each side, which makes it very strong. Now, if you see, the drive chain is still a bit bendy. So now we need to make some cross bracing. So what we have to do for cross bracing is put this, like uh, the three hole connector in the center of the two tires on both of the drive trains. And then put one more right in front of it on the other beam. And now you could just attach it. Okay, so so we're gonna attach the brain. On the brain, put a, a two by two connector, uh, two on each side on the very end, and attach all these 
holes on the on the two hole connectors. And although some other uh, drivetrains may have this, like connecting the holes where there are holes here, like on the inside, let's say these are closer and it's attached over here, that's, it's very hard to put in. And let's say there's a problem, you need to take it out. It also is very hard. But because you have, like these are attached right over here, you can easily put it in and easily take it out while having basically the same amount of strength of the brace of the brain. Okay. Okay, so now we have the brain in. So this is your complete flexi drive. Can you add the wires in? Okay, just put the wires in. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you learned something. And go build the flexi drive. This is the first of many videos to come to teach you how to add on to the flexi drive in the future. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, God. <laughs> No, 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 no,